Morning. Morning. Today is 30th of August, yes. 2024, one day before National Day. Okay. Another got get connected session. Today we talk about licensing in Malaysia after the new incorporations. Okay. Uh, before I proceed, let me introduce myself as usual. My name is Mr. Ko Teg Peng, approved auditors and licensed tax agent from KTPs. With me is Ms. Lim. She is our client relationship aide and she mostly takes care of all those miscellaneous, miscellaneous from our client, from our potential client, things like that. Okay? So without, without any due delay, let's proceed licensing after the new incorporations. Okay? Mm. So what of course you will go through the normal SSM incorporation. This one I won't cover. I think this is cover previously. If, if you want to go and study, please visit our past webinar. Okay, today we're going to talk about licensing or requirement uh, beside SSM. Okay, first one is income tax file number. <laughs> tax file number. Okay, yes. so would you like to proceed? Yes, uh, after the company uh, registered or incorporated with uh, Surahan Jaya Sharikat Malaysia, which is uh, in short we call it SSM, the next uh, mandatory requirements uh, is to register uh, with the Lembaga Hasil Dalam Negeri, in short we call it LHDN. In English we call it Income Tax Department. In Inland Revenue Board Malaysia, okay. Income IRB. Tax Department is layman term. The technical term should be Inland Revenue Board of Malaysia, okay. IRV in short. Okay. Okay. So uh in pre our previous uh video or webinar we do uh mention about uh tax responsibility as a taxpayer. So we also discussed discuss uh that this registration is uh, either you register with uh LHDNs or LHDN will automatically issue or delegate the income tax file number and also the employer tax file number uh, to the businesses. So this is essential to all businesses because you can uh, properly manage the tax affair of your company or your entity. Yes. So basically, the first round should be... Uh, sorry, I use a layman terms of income tax department or... The technical term is a Lembaga Hasil Dalam Negeri, or in English we call it LHDN. Okay, so registration, get, getting thing, the number, tax reference numbers is the far most important. There's two type of numbers, right? Yes. If I'm not mistaken, for company level, it should be form C. C, e, C number. C. Uh, C. C for corporation. Yeah. Um, uh, second one, it should be form E. e. E stand for employer. employer. Okay, so basically, uh, C as the name says that uh, this is company level or corporate level. Mainly, um, it deal with um, form C, which is the annual tax return. But don't forget, um, in Malaysia, um, Malaysia is an advanced country. Okay, you need to estimate your tax in advance. You need to pay your tax in advance. So um, do take note, okay, uh, please, if you're not sure, go to revisit our past webinar. Then E-wise is very simple. Once you get employees to work in your company, you need to deduct PCB. As I said before, Malaysia is an advanced country. So everything is advanced. So when you pay your employees' salaries or remunerations, you need to deduct income tax in advance, okay? So uh, I think nowadays it's uh, almost pretty straightforward. It's like online. <coughs> IRB will automatically, meaning SSM will inform. IRB. IRB, uh, IRB will issue tax numbers. To the entity, to the company. Okay. Mm. So uh, uh, please don't wait until one year or something like that. Normally it should be quite fast. Okay. Yes. Because you need to deduct. Uh, PCB, you need to withhold your tax, things like that for CP204. Okay, mm. okay. I'm going to cover much on income tax department or IRB. Next is um, we talk about employee sites. Okay, mm. I think there's certain some um, requirements. Okay, would you like to elaborate? 
Yes, uh, when your company hires a new employee, so the company need to register with several, uh, several organizations to comply with the Malaysian labor law. So the primary two uh, authority will be the KWSB, which is a Kumpulan Wang Simpanan Pekerja, followed by uh, Perkeso, Pertubuhan Keselamatan Social, and the last one is the HRD Corp, on Human Resource Development Corporation. So basically, the KWSP is uh, you register uh, for contributions of the EPF, Employee uh, Provident Funds, uh, to make a mandatory contribution on uh, your salary. So the EPF actually is a savings scheme. Scavis, uh, savings scheme where both employer and employee uh, contributes a portions from the salary. Prim this uh, contribution primary is for retirement purpose and of course EPF uh, will have uh, you, you, from the saving itself you will earn dividends uh, distributed by KWSB. I think for Singapore companies very straightforward it's something like CPF, CPF. okay mm. central providing funds, funds. Mm. okay then next Next is uh, the Perkeso. So Perkeso, under Perkeso, there's two contributions required. The first one is uh, uh, SOCSO, we call it Social Security Organization, followed by another one is uh, EIS, is the Employment Insurance System. So both SOCSO, SOCSO cover for work-related injury and, uh, and occupation, occupational disease. While EIS offer is for financial assistance to the employee who lose their job. Then the last one is the HR, uh, HRDC, the, which uh, companies have more than 10, 10 or more employees is required to register with HRD Corp. Uh, for the Human uh, Resources Development Fund, we call it HRDF. And uh, for those company less than uh, nine employees, uh, is an optional. This HRDF is actually is a training levy collected uh, from the employer to funding the employees' trainings and development programs to ensuring that they continue uh, development and enhance their skills. Okay, mm. I think. Uh, in short, let me summarize. I think it's straightforward. Basically, when you employ new employees, there are three departments you have to take care of. Mm. First is EPF, EPF, more on retirement yes. for the employee. Okay. Second one is SOCSO, okay. So, okay. Basically, this is uh, more insurance. on insurance and insurance on injuries on anything happened during the work or right. after the work okay the third one is more on training and development we call it uh, hrd mm. Hub, okay so three department you need to register right right yes so okay with this let's proceed to um business okay i think business you need a license right yeah <laughs> if you operate on the shop lot or even you operate in a commercial buildings you need a license right correct okay please so to le uh, to legally set up your business uh, premises such as uh, mr ko mentioned just now the office shop lot commercial building or factory you are required to obtain a business license followed by a Papan Iklan license. In English, we call it signboard license. So these licenses are issued by the local authority or the local council, depends on your area and uh, the nature of your business as well. So the business license actually allows you to operate legally within that jurisdiction or that area. And the signboard license is required for the signage to display at your premises. So basically, if they are operating in JB, meaning you have to deal with MBJP, Majes, Bandaran, Johor Baru. Baru. Mm. So basically, you need to get a business license and a signboard license. Okay, then? Uh, other than the business license and signboard license, uh, if your type of business, uh, they may need uh, further approval or obtain more approval from other authority, for example, Bomba and also the JKKP. The bomber is uh, to ensure your premises is uh, running in a very safe uh, regulations. And then you have the proper fire extinguisher, 
uh, the exit uh, when there's a fire occurrence and other safety measures in that place. And then as for JKKP, it's actually in, uh, involved more on uh, manufacturing and industrial activity where you need to comply the safety of the workplace on the regulations, uh, including the equipment, the machinery installed for, for your workers to handle, handle on. Yes. So, summarize. You need bomber license. Yes. Basically, basically, you will see whether you have a fire extinguishers, you have Exit. a safety safe road, uh. thing like that. Okay. I think it's basic. It's applied to everyone. Correct. Every firms, every business operator. Mm -hmm. Okay. But if you are in manufacturing or industry, there's a special requirement from JKKP, meaning Department of Occupational Safety and Health. Okay, so basically they will look at your workplace safety, some um, machinery installation, all these things. Okay, am I right to say so? Yeah. Okay, so um, other than that, I think there's another license um, which we covered last week. Mm. I think this is MIDA license. Would you like to proceed? Cut it short, I think. If you want to know the detail of MIDA license, manufacturing license, you can watch our past webinars, okay? Yes. Okay, so, to simplify this uh, license under MIDA, it's actually is a manufacturing license that you require to, uh, to apply for a manufacturing license uh, according to the Industrial Coordination Act 1975, which we covered on our last webinar. Uh, this is, please watch our past webinar, okay? So, uh, our next one is um, trading house, mm. special license, right? Special license uh. for trading house. So, for trading house, you may uh, need to obtain a wholesale, retail and trade license. In short, we call it WRT. So, this license is uh, governed and issued by Ministry of Domestic Trades and Cost of Living. In commonly, we know it as a Kementerian Perdagangan Dalam Negeri dan Kosara Hidup KPDN. And this particularly involved with the companies has foreign ownership. Then if WIP is mandatory, it's mandatory required if you in, involve in wholesaling, retails, import, export, and also uh, distribution uh, trade activities. This one is to ensure that the trading business operate legally and comply with the regulations set by uh, Malaysia government. Yeah, so it is very crucial to obtain this uh, uh, license, WRT license, uh, for the trading house. I think basically you will say that um, put it in this way, Malay word, or wholesale. 99 bar, uh, 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 something like that. The government want to make sure, uh, like your fellow, your age, is selling below the selling price, mm -hmm. right? Uh, the tepong, something like Control. that. Control. Rice. Uh -huh. uh, I think it's um, quite straightforward. I think it's, uh, the chicken price, especially before uh, Dibabali, uh, uh, Raya. Raya, Chinese New Year, they were particular about this. Okay? So, um, the next one is specialized industries, uh, 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 meaning uh, for construction company or FMB company or addition, education and companies, there's certain requirements, okay? Um, we're going to cover basic one, like Ms. Lim says, the construction company, which license you go through? Uh, for construction industry, you are required to register with CIDB, which is Construction Industry Development Board. Uh, it's mandatory for all the contractor to ensure that the company meets the standard requirement in a construction project in Malaysia. So let's say for uh, food and FMB, food uh, and beverage industry? Yeah, for those uh, food and beverage like restaurants, cafe, uh, the businesses must obtain the license from the Ministry of Health because it's uh, handling the food, so they must ensure the, the food that you're handling is uh, safe to consume and also hygiene. Other than that, if let's say you have uh, trading, uh, tradings or catering for the Muslim consumers, uh, you, sh uh, you, should, you should obtain the halal certification from Jakim. So uh, the full name of Jakim is Development of Islamic Development Malaysia. So to make sure that the product, you, uh, the catering is complied with the Islamic uh, directory law. 
Okay, next is educational industry like uh, operator of kindergarten or child care centers mm. or even uh, primary school, thing like that. Yes. Yeah. So for educational wise, it's very straightforward. You will require to secure your education license with the Ministry of uh, Education. Yes. Recruitment agency? Mm, recruitment agency is a, is a recruitment service where you need to get a recruitment uh, license from the Ministry of Human Resource, HR. M O H R. Uh, logistic and forwarding industry. Uh, logistic and forwarding industry basically they have two category of the registration. Number one is the International Integrated Logistic Service. In short, we call it I I L S. Uh, where this one you are required to register with the uh, MIDA. Malaysia's Investment Development Authority. Then followed by the second type is the freight forwarding agents or custom agents license. This one you are required to apply from the Royal Malaysia Custom RMC and uh, is uh, involving the company business like logistic, forwarding and custom brokerage. So um, recycling? Mm. Recycling industry. Yeah, recycling because recently on the green uh, environment, re recycling is also an industry that booming up. So for businesses uh, in this sector, you must obtain a recycling permit uh, uh, from MIDA also, uh, also Royal Malaysia Custom. And inclusive, uh, the third uh, authority is the department departments of uh, environmental. This one is to ensure that you comply with the environmental and uh, recycling regulations. Mm. IT? Information and communication industry? Yeah, uh, IT and uh, 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 this one is very straightforward also. It's uh, required under MCMC, which is the Malaysian Communication and uh, Multimedia Commissions. So you require to obtain a media license from them. Okay, the finally, I think financial service like I'm um, an auditors, I think it's straightforward. Bank Negara Malaysia's. Mm. Okay. Yes. So um, more or less we cover already before we 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 finish we we um we call it a shot or something. Like that. I think another license I forget to mention. I think is custom Royal Custom Malaysia's. Uh, um, you need to look at uh, service tax or sales tax or even exemptions. So exemptions um, uh, for certain industries, like our industry is like uh, for our service, service provider, we need to charge 8%, 8 service tax. Uh, so you need to register once you reach the threshold. Mm. For hotel, I think they have a certain uh, uh, levy, thing like that, tourism levy. Mm. So, um, and then one forget, I forget already, income tax department, once you get the numbers, if you get the new employees, please file in CP21. Okay, with this, I think more or less we cover, may not be comprehensive. This is for uh, illustration. Uh, please consult your consultant or your tax agent or auditors. Uh, so, um, thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Wish you all the best. Thank you. Happy National Day. Okay.